Hello and welcome guys to another podcast here on Talk FCB and today as promised we're going to be talking about our transfer market business and looking at a complete review of what we've done this summer in terms of signings. Number one is Alan Halilovic brought in from Dinamo Zagreb for around two million pounds which is literally nothing in terms of the current market. You think of how much modern day players go for and 2.2 million euros I think it was you know with add-ons and different things but that is really an absolute steal I mean you know I don't know how we got him that cheap it's quite incredible really but he is a big big player he's a big big star in Croatia already he's made three caps even though he's only 18 he's appeared for the national side made over 44 appearances for Dinamo Zagreb scoring seven goals in the league and he is a talent you know you can see already in the pre-season games that we've seen him in he is one of the most um, you know, creative players that I've seen come into the side with no experience and really express themselves. And the confidence he has, considering how young he actually is, is quite astounding. And he really is a big, big talent. And he'll go into the B side this year. But I think if he has a promising year in the B team, we could see him definitely in the first team by next season because he is that good. I think so far, you know, looking at him, he's a mix between Rakitic and Iniesta. I don't like comparing players with other players. Halilovic will be his own player, he'll be his own character, but at the moment he looks a very, very big talent, and I'm extremely pleased that we managed to get him on board this summer. Number two is our number one goalkeeper, we think, Mark andre Ter Stegen, a player who he brought in from Borussia Mönchengladbach for around £10 million. A very, very good fee again, pretty cheap for in terms of a goalkeeper. He's only young, you know, he's not very old, Ter Stegen. Many appearances is though for Borussia Mönchengladbach and a very emotional exit he was for him this summer and again in his case as well despite only being 22 he has appeared four times for the Germany national side made over 100 appearances for Mönchengladbach and he is very experienced in the Bundesliga so he's going to have to adapt to La Liga he's going to have to do different things, you know, in La Liga and adapt to the different teams. But I think Ter Stegen, from what we've seen of him already, is a very good shot stopper, very, very good with his feet. Uh, he's a very, very unique goalkeeper in the way that he's not that tall, you know, he's not that big. But what he is is a very, very good goalkeeper with a presence. And I think he'll be a very, very good signing. In terms of his age, he's only 22, as I say. That is very, very young for a goalkeeper, which means that if he does show some promising form, he can really establish himself into one of the big keepers of the world. And he'll be around for at least another 10 years. And he can really become a legend at this club. And I'd love to see that happen because he looks like a great signing. And again, at 12 million euros, looks like an absolute bargain. At number three is Ivan Rakitic, one of the most exciting signings for me this summer. I think he's been a, a brilliant player for Sevilla over the last few years and I'm really excited to have him here. And he's a perfect age, an absolutely perfect age to buy a midfielder. Again, though, we got him for such a great price. You know, Sevilla had a lot of interest, you know, from Real Madrid as well. Atletico Madrid wanted Rakitic, but he chose to come to Barca. Around 20 million euros, 19 million euros he came for, which is just incredibly cheap for a man of this character, who won the Europa League, of course, last season, was instrumental in that, destroyed Real Madrid in the two games in the league last season as well. Um, he's 26 years old, peak of his career coming up, six foot tall, so he's got a bit of, you know, his stability about him. He's got good balance, very, very good strength, good with either foot. You know, he's a very, very technically gifted player. You can see, you know, that he's got a good goals record, great assist record. He's very, very good from set pieces, delivering the ball into the box to be very, very handy for next season. And he's got good experience in La Liga as well. He doesn't have to adapt to the league. He's coming in, he knows what he's getting into. And that's very important going into the next season, that he can adapt very quickly into our surroundings. And you're looking at him in pre season, he looks very comfortable already. And he has come out praising him. Rakitic, as well, has come out with a number of good phrases. One of the ones that I did enjoy was Messi is miraculous, he came out and said. And it looks like he's settling in brilliantly. And I think he'll be a brilliant signing. And certainly the man who can, if anyone can do it, step into Xavi's shoes this season. And hopefully, if he can achieve half of what he did, he'll be an excellent, excellent addition to the squad. At number four is our second choice goalkeeper, we think, Claudio Bravo, brought in for 15 million euros, quite expensive that one, more expensive than Ter Stegen, Real Sociedad valued him very highly and you can see why he's a very, very accomplished keeper in the league, a number of appearances in La Liga, he's very, very experienced, at 31 years old, a very good time to buy a goalkeeper, their best years now. 31, 32, 33 years old. He's a captain for his country, Chile. We saw at the World Cup how influential he was from the back, from very, very good saves there. He deals well under pressure. 
I think he would be excellent in terms of helping Ter Stegen to settle into his surroundings. I think he'd be very, very good in terms of in the dressing room. He'd be a very, very good leader. He's a good person, apparently, good personality about him. And I think Claudio Bravo, despite being a little bit expensive, will certainly pay off that fee. He'll be used, I would have thought, in the cup competitions, but he may well get some appearances in the league. It'll be him and Ter Stegen rivaling for that number one spot. I think that competition for places will be very, very key this season, as Bravo as well looks like a very, very decent signing from Barcelona. Two centre-back signings up next, which is something I never thought I'd say, to be honest, that we never actually get round to signing any centre-backs, but it has come true. And finally, we have two defenders in Jeremy Mathieu and Thomas Vermaelen, brought in from Valencia and Arsenal, respectively. Now, it's very interesting to see, you know, there's a lot of criticism of the centre-backs we've signed, but we've moaned for years and years and years that we haven't got any defenders in. And now we have, I feel we have to grasp that and be grateful that we have got them on board and just support them. I think Jeremy Mathieu, again, very very experienced in La Liga, very, very experienced defender, knows the league well, he's got appearances for France, you know, he's a very, very tall defender, very, very good in the air, which is something we don't always have, he's a presence in terms of defending set pieces and free kicks, again, something we don't usually have, there is definitely positive points, and I don't think he'll be the number one centre-back next season, but certainly he will be used throughout the season, and he'll be very, very good to have as a player on the bench if we need him, or, you know, if there's injuries in the squad, something that we don't usually have, we usually have to play Busquets at centre-back or Song at centre-back, and it's nice now to have the option of around four centre-backs to choose from, and that'll be very, very key going into the new season. Thomas Marlon, the only problem I have with him, he's a fantastic centre-back, brilliant age, fantastic leader, good in the air, good in a tackle, very strong, but he is injury-prone. We have to keep him clear of injuries. He's just recovering now from an injury he sustained at the World Cup. He should be back just after the season starts, hopefully. And after then, we want to keep him nice and free from injuries so then he can have a good campaign, a good solid campaign where he gets a run of games and a load of confidence as well. And he needs to be playing matches. And I think he could be a very, very good signing. And at only £10 million as well, it's a very, very good signing indeed. Now, looking at all those signings, I'm just looking, and I think I'm missing a name. I'm just trying to think who it may be. Oh, it's Luis Suarez. What a signing that is. I mean, it's, it is the golden boy signing, isn't it? It's the Hollywood signing from Barca, and they pulled it out the bag brilliantly. Real Madrid, again, were interested in Luis Suarez, as probably every club worldwide, if they could afford him, was. And he will deliver. There's no doubt about it. A player of his quality, a player of his class... He will deliver. He is probably the best striker in the world at the moment. A number nine, a player that can play up front on his own. He's very, very good with his first touch and his technical you know, abilities are brilliant. He's very, very good on the ball. He's a striker, of course, but he's got been known to give a lot of assists as well. That'll be very, very good during his time at Barca. And I really do believe that Suarez will be make the difference. You know, Neymar, Messi, Suarez, any team in the world will struggle massively to contain those. I don't care what anybody says. We may have our weaknesses in the team, but Suarez will be the key to making our attacking threat the best the world has seen. And it will be an absolutely formidable lineup next season when we see those three in action and I just hope it works out so that's a little overview there we may have one more signing to come we're hearing possibly a right back Quadrado, Juan Fran, Pete Cech have all been mentioned we'll have to see if anything else happens but so far looking at those signings looking at what they'll bring to the squad I have to say it's a very very good summer for us we don't usually at Barca see this many players come in all at once, but certainly looking at those names, look at the prices we got them for. You know, we've seen sales as well in Sanchez, in Fabregas. We've got a lot of money back into the club as well. And I think in terms of Zubi, Bartomeu, Luis Enrique, on behalf of all of Barcelona, it's been a brilliant, brilliant summer for signings. And I hope they all settle down, settle in nicely and do brilliantly for us. And we have a fantastic season. So thanks for watching this video. As always, guys, please like, comment and subscribe. Stay on Twitter for updates on the a new podcast coming out in the next few days and also i will see you guys in the next podcast Action!